can knock that shot down. That was a good look. Key with a rebound. Stripped from behind by TJ Jackson. Pensacola with the ball now. Ten on the shot clock. Five seconds left. They get it off before the shot clock is expired, but they miss it. Key with a basketball. Pulls up. Gets a little bump, fades away, knocks it down, 38-30. Minute 17, Piedmont trying to cut this lead. It was as much as 15 earlier in the game, and Piedmont finally has got a shot in the arm. And they got a little action going. What we don't need is a foul with 10 seconds left on this shot clock. Don't bail them out. But Joel Thomas, Pensacola's leading scorer, Drops one from the corner, and that's 11. But Piedmont has definitely turned it up. Key with a basketball, takes it inside. Beautiful move. And he's hard to stop when he gets an open space in the lane. Key's got that wiry kind of body that can just maneuver through people. And he's got a soft touch, and he also has some hops that he can get up there. Joel Thomas with a ball earlier and wasn't real happy with whatever it was. Here's Key with a ball at the buzzer. He misses it. But I tell you what, the last five minutes of this game has belonged to Piedmont. They're only down by nine. If they'd have played that way the whole first half, this score would be a little bit different. 41-32, nine-point lead as we go into halftime.
time running out. Here in halftime, we're about to start the second half. We had some technical difficulties in the first half. And I don't believe we were up and running until about the last minute of the first half. I'll try to throw you a recap real fast. Pensacola came out on fire. They built a 15 point lead. Then Piedmont clawed their way back into it. And that's the story of 41-32 lead right now. Piedmont will start out with a basketball on the second half. Leading scores for Piedmont was Mike Key, he had 13. And C.J. Tyson, he had seven. And Piedmont came out first shot of the half. Tyson missed it. Pensacola now with a basketball. Pensacola's leading scores were Joel Thomas, he had 14. And um, John Andrews, a big man, had eight. And T.J. Jackson just knocked it down. And that gives him eight. And the lead's back up to 12. Javon Summers, Mike Key, Nathan Hewitt, Malik Milton, and C.J. Tyson is the five. Walker has decided to start here in the second half. And Mike Key just knocked down a three. That's going to be his, his second of the game. And he's got 16. Piedmont's biggest problem, if, if that's what you want to call it, in the first half was that they couldn't really stop the post defense or the post play inside. And then when they did collapse, they'd kick it out and Pensacola would knock it down. And they literally were on fire. I think Pensacola shot almost 70% in the first half. And once again, the big man, John Andrews, knocks it down inside for Pensacola, 46-35. Pensacola with a basketball. Inside to the younger brother, Tom. Andrews, and he knocks it down. Too easy, too early, 48-35. 17-54 remaining. Summers calls to play. Piedmont had a, a nice intensity going the last Four to five minutes of the second half caused some turnovers, got some transition baskets, and uh, climbed their way back in it. But early on in the game, Piedmont offense, they didn't execute very well. A lot of one pass, one shots. Didn't run their offense the way that they wanted to. And a lot of that, I think, has to do with the chemistry right now. A couple of new faces on the team. And uh, they'll get the lineup they like. And Piedmont will get it. Milton with a rebound. And up the court quickly he goes. Takes it the length of the court and misses. Hewitt keeps it going in there. He's fighting for it. But Joel Thomas comes down with a rebound. Oh, there's a push in the back. And I don't know why Tom Andrews is acting like he didn't do anything because I thought that might be an intentional foul. But nevertheless, Randy Dooling, Randy, Randy Dooling caught him, called the foul, Piedmont basketball, 48-35. Let's see if Piedmont can get something going. Key, wide open, 21-footer, no good. Can't seem to get any rhythm here in the second half so far. There's a tie ball. Neither player wanting to give the ball up. And you like to see that in your players. Competitive drive. Yep. 
13 point lead, Pensacola, and they have the basketball. Tyson went for the pass. And ran into Thomas, so they caught a foul on him. <clears throat> Tim Worrells are coming in the game for Tyson. Piedmont in a man to man. Thomas tried a couple of moves, then turned the ball over the walk. The BP Mont basketball. Checking in the game for Pensacola is number 32, Dylan Crane. Crane came in in the first half and knocked down two three pointers in a row from about the hash mark. Worlds for three, can't get it to fall. Crane with a rebound. Pensacola quickly up the court. Crane right side. P Pensacola swings it back around. Try to get it into Andrews. Cross court pass. Cross key pass to Crane. But Hewitt's guarding Andrews pretty well. <laughs> Referee Steve Hinkle bailed him out at that time. Hewitt playing pretty good straight up defense from what we could observe up here. Coach Walker not very happy with that call. Andrews knocks down the first one. Knocks down the second one. Pensacola has their biggest lead of the game. And, or matches the biggest lead of the game at 15. Key in the corner to Milton. Ball was tipped. Pensacola with the ball. Pensacola has really executed their offense. Passed very well, moved the ball very well, and it shows. Andrews, just a little too much for Hewitt on that particular play. 17 is now the lead. Coach Walker gonna call a timeout and talk it over with his boys. 14.58 remaining, second half. Pensacola with its largest lead of the game at 17. But Piedmont is a fast striking team. They've got a lot of athletes, got a lot of shooters. Piedmont could be back in this game very quickly. Coach Clint Walker for the Piedmont International. It's his third year at the helm of this job. And he's done a wonderful job as coach. Walker took over a team that hadn't had a winning season in let's just say quite some time. And he's got everyone excited around here about basketball again. Walker played for Piedmont back in the early 90s. There's a district championship banner hanging up in the rafters from 1994. Walker was a part of that team. He was a first team All-American as a freshman. They're trying to win one as a coach now. Milton, right side. Got the ball knocked out of his hands. But Randy Doolin Thought he was fouled and blew the whistle. Worlds will take out the ball. Out the key at the top. Milton to key to Worlds. 15 footer off the mark. And that's just not a shot that Worlds is used to taking. The little 15 footer kind of off balance. 
Hewitt got away with one there. And the younger brother, Tom Andrews, backs in Malik Milton and scores. 19 point lead. Piedmont on a drought. And Summers just comes down and decides he'll pull up and shoot. Why not? 54 38. and Hewitt have been battling in the paint basically all night and Andrews has been winning most of the battles but Andrews got caught on that one An offensive foul was called Hewitt will sit down and that will bring in Tanner Poole Javon Summers takes it in whirls in the corner or to Milton in the corner Milton drives the hole, gets fouled. <laughs> Milton to go to line to shoot two. That was on the big man, John Andrews. That's his third. Milton knocks it down. C.J. Tyson back in the game for Piedmont. If we can get him going, we can close that gap in a hurry. Milton misses the second one. Andrews with a rebound. And here comes Pensacola. 15-point lead. See if Piedmont can turn up the intensity on defense. Pull way out on Andrews. T.J. Jackson found himself open on the wing, put it up and missed it. He's knocked down a couple of those tonight. There's Crane. Knocks down another three. That's his third one. Looked like Pensacola spending a lot of time down in the lane, though. And uh, I don't see any of the referees calling time they're camping out down there. Tyson with the ball to Key. Key in the corner to Milton. He can knock it down. Not this time. There's a fight for the ball. Whoa. And the big man getting a little excited for Pensacola. Eighteen point lead. Piedmont basketball. Whirls to Tyson. Tyson puts it up, and there's a foul on the big man, 5-0, and that's four. And that is a crucial foul because the offense has ran through number 5-0 tonight. Let's see if Piedmont can take advantage of it. Tyson knocks down the first one. Cuts it to 17. Entering the game for Pensacola. It's number 21, Elijah Kimmick. He's a junior. Tyson knocks down the second one. Lee's now 16. Piedmont putting a little pressure on Pensacola. See if they can rush it down the court. Crane tries a kind of a wild shot. He's open for three, and he knocks it down. That's his fourth three. Milton with a basketball now. Lead back to 19. Pensacola in a 2-1-2 zone. Milton tries to draw a crowd, kicks it out to Key, back to Worlds. He's got Tyson over here on the wing. That's the guy you want to get it to. Whirls a little stutter step. Falls backwards. Gets fouled. Whirls will go to the line to shoot three. it 
it down. He's got two more to go. Justin Valentine set to come in for Piedmont. Well, Piedmont has, has done pretty well on offense the last three or four times up and down the court. But they can't stop Crane from knocking down the three-pointers. He did the same thing in the first half. Piedmont kind of made a little run, and Crane came in and started knocking them down from the cheap seats. Crane with the ball. Left side. Over to Jackson. Crane tried driving the lane. And uh, it looks like he got fouled as he went up, at least according to Steve Hinkle. I'm not quite for sure if we saw it the same up here. But when that whistle blows, it's not up to us. 18 point lead. And just things aren't going Piedmont's way right now. Tyson had his man boxed out. They missed the free throw. Ball bounced funny and he stepped out of bounds. Pensacola has it under their own goal. So Pensacola doing pretty well with their big man on the bench. Taking some time off the clock. And Crane knocks down another three. He's got five of them on the night. He's only missed one, he's five for six. Leads 21. Tyson on the baseline in a little bit of trouble. Pull. Swings the ball to Key. Key knocks it down. Well, if Piedmont's gonna do something, I'd say right here, is about the time it needs to start getting done. Key, putting a little pressure. I'd be wondering where number 32 was for Pensacola if I was Piedmont. 18 on the shot clock. There he is, Crane. And he finally knocks, he finally misses it. And number 31, Marlon Gardner, Fouls over the back, gives Piedmont a break. 10.08 remaining. Piedmont down by 18 here in the second half. Not for sure exactly what that tactic was this early in the game. One pass to Tyson. Misses the three. Pensacola just running their offense. Running out some time. Don't bail them out with a foul, boys. There's a pass inside. Seven on the shot clock. Crane fade away from three. It's off the mark. There's a fight for it. Piedmont up with it. Keith crosses midcourt. Round the back, drives all the way to the hole. Left-handed, no good, gets his own rebound. Valentine open for three. Valentine on the floor, no whistle. Piedmont couldn't take advantage with that possession. They played pretty good defense the last two or three times down the court. Nice little drop inside, help came a little bit too late. 20 point lead for Pensacola. Inside, Key, wide open for three, and he knocks it down. Key has kept Piedmont in the game. 
He's the only one that seems that he can knock down a shot. And Key has 26. 17 point lead. Every time Piedmont starts to bring it down, Crane always knocks down a three. But Stuart Taylor is all over him this time. And it's just fight for the ball. And it's one of those things where the ball is just bouncing every way but Piedmont's way. But Mike Key comes up with a rebound. Here comes Key. Taking it down to court, he's fouled. Or taking it to the hole, rather, and he's fouled. And he'll go to the line. Pensacola had probably five or six opportunities on that last possession. And Piedmont seemed to be boxing out in the right positions, and the ball would just bounce off the rim funny or a little long. And that's just the way it's going for Piedmont tonight. But 7.49 remaining. But like I said, this Piedmont team can strike in a hurry. Key misses the first free throw. And the big fella, John Andrews, back in the game. Bench for Pensacola did the job that they needed to do. So for Piedmont, you got Stuart Taylor, C.J. Tyson, Justin Valentine, Mike Key, and Hewitt. Nate Hewitt in the game as of now, but there's a timeout on the court, so that may change. Shifted away to 16, it was 22 at one time. And if Piedmont can just get some kind of burst, some kind of run going, it may be enough to win this ball game. Piedmont far from out of it. So Taylor, Tyson, Key, Valentine and Hewitt in the game. Piedmont showing full court pressure. Valentine steals the ball, knocks it down. 15 point lead, 14 point lead. Andrews taking the ball out of bounds. They're having trouble with it, struggling. They get it across mid court. Tyson. All over Williams. There's a trap. They almost got it again. Pensacola looking a little rattled, and this is the Piedmont team that I'm used to seeing. With that tenacious defense. Andrews gets it blocked from behind by Nate Hewitt. Key picks it up to Stuart Taylor. Taylor all the way down the court. He's trapped and no foul was called. I can't believe that one. His feet was completely taken out from under him, but Hewitt comes down with a rebound back to Mike Key, and here comes Key. And there's a lob. And finally, Carlos Torian decided it was time to blow the whistle. Stuart Taylor's feet was literally taken out from under him. And there was no foul called on that play. Piedmont has brought it to 14. Key, the leading scorer for Piedmont at the line, can cut it to 12. The lead with one time was at 22. Key misses it. 6.49 remaining. It's crunch time for the Bruins. Corey Williams will bring it up. Key all over him. Hewitt doing a good job on Andrews. He missed a shot, but the ball bounced back to him, and he put it back up, and he was fouled by Hewitt. But the last couple times down court, Hewitt has won that battle inside. Andrews, first free throw is up and good. He's got a sweet touch for a big man.
second one. Off the mark. Key with the ball. Up the court quickly to Valentine. Back to Key. Key in the corner. Good ball movement by the Bruins. There's Key. Open for three. He misses it. That's the shot that they wanted. Key's been knocking that one down all night. Pensacola got behind Piedmont's defense on the full court pressure. And Elijah Kimmick throws one down. They left Key open again. Not for sure why. Stuart Taylor somehow came up with a ball. But it came, went out of bounds. 17 point lead. 70 to 53. Sometimes you play that pressure defense full court. If you get any type of breakdown, you can get burned back door like that, and that's what happened. But that's the chance you have to take when you're down by 17 with 546 remaining in the game. In these next five minutes and 46 seconds, you can bet Pensacola's gonna try to take some time off the clock. Piedmont's going to have to man up and play some defense to get back in this game. Crowd trying to generate a little excitement. Get some noise going. Give these Bruins some home court advantage. Javon Summers, the senior guard, is back into the game for Piedmont. So you've got Javon Summers, Mike Key, Tim Worles, CJ Tyson, and the big man Hewitt in the game. Full court pressure being applied by Piedmont. Aroni, and there's a jump ball. Good defensive pressure by the Bruins. It'll be Pensacola's basketball. And that's exactly what we needed. Andrews, a big man, taking it out. Summers and Key. They get the ball across midcourt. Summers knocks the ball out of bounds. Pensacola looking a little rattled. 22 on the shot clock. Summers all over him. And once again, the ball bouncing the other way. Summers with the basketball to Tyson, to Key. Key had the three, thought about it. Worlds now has it. Top of the key, no good. And there's a breakdown, and Hewitt goes up. And he's called for the foul. 17 point lead. Just under five minutes left to go in the game. Piedmont trying to desperately get a run. And if I know Coach Walker's strategy, he probably trying to tell the boys to cut it to 10 with two minutes left to go in the game. You cut it to 10 with two minutes, the strategy is to knock it out in sections. And you don't necessarily have to go down and shoot the three every time. Take what they give you. If it's a three, then take it. Tyson pulls up, he's got it. There's a good start, and there's a timeout. 30 seconds. Tyson pulled up from 25 feet. And if that kid gets on fire, look out. You've got Whirls out there who can knock it down, Mike Key who can knock it down, and Tyson who can knock it down. Any one of those three, if given the opportunity, can knock down five, six, three-pointers a game. 
They're very well capable of it. Game's not over yet. Tanner Poole to check in for the Bruins. This is the Piedmont Classic Tournament. I had the opportunity to be on the Piedmont basketball team who played in the first Piedmont Classic. And we actually beat Pensacola to win the tournament. And so here we are again sometime later. And we've got another fight on our hands. Piedmont with full court pressure. Summers in the corner. They're trying to trap him. Summers trying to get down the court. They try to take it and pull. Throws the ball out of bounds. It was a three on one basically and Summers was getting it back as fast as he was and pull saved that one. Piedmont giving it all they have. There's a block. And somehow Pensacola comes up with a rebound. Not for sure why they pulled up to shoot it anyway. Right now you would think they would try to take time off the clock, but that's what good defensive pressure will do to a team. They will make you make ill-advised decisions. I'm not sure about that one. There was a spin move out of control. And they blew the whistle. Oh, Steve Hinkle. Made the call. Elijah Kimmick at the line. And he knocks it down. 16 point lead. 72 to 56. And he knocks down the second one. Entering the game for Pensacola. Number 31 to Marlon Gardner. He's a freshman. Summers with the ball to Key. Key pulls up. Off the mark. Pensacola with the ball. They're coming down. And now it's just a matter of taking time off the clock. Piedmont giving them as much pressure as they possibly can. And the ball bounces Pensacola's way once again. And Tom Andrews with a rebound puts it back up. And it's a 19 point lead. Pensacola with a rebound. Fifteen on the shot clock, 316 remaining. And unless a miracle happens, it'll be a W for Pensacola. And Piedmont and Coach Walker will have to regroup and live to fight another day. Tom Andrews knocks down the shot. And there's a timeout on the floor. 2.40 remaining. Yeah. 23 point lead. Piedmont played well in spurts. Pensacola came out on fire tonight. I think they hit their first nine out of 11 shots and four of those was from three-point land and Piedmont just never could 
quite regain their composure after that big left hook sent them staggering. And they gave it a galleon effort, never gave up, but tonight Pensacola was just a little too much for them. These teams played 10 times. I say there would be a five and five record. Pensacola is not 23 points better than Piedmont, I can assure you. But that being said, Coach Mark Getch had his boys ready to play today. And they executed very well on offense. Ball bounced their way a few times. And there you have it. Kalen Bird in the game for Piedmont. In a little bit of trouble. Bird drives the lane, puts up a shot off the mark, no good, and it goes out of bounds. <laughs> then it goes to Pensacola. And that play about sums it up for how it's been for Piedmont tonight. Scoreboard's still running. Not for sure why, but it is. But that just put an exclamation point on it. Elijah Kimmick just came down and, and just threw one down. Tanner Poole tried to catch up with him, fouled him. And there's a whistle. And it looks like Randy Doolin has noticed the time expiring a little faster than it should maybe. tomorrow at 1 o'clock when Piedmont will play host to Kentucky Christian University. And I'm not for sure exactly what Coach Walker and Coach Getch are talking about the scores table with Steve Hinkle. was, I guess they got it resolved. <laughs> Time running down, minute 37 left. Stuart Taylor, nice little baseline move. And he scores. Piedmont still giving it all they have. And there's a foul on Roba Flint. But some of the positive things you can come away with tonight is to see Mike Key back on the floor for Piedmont International. Key played really well tonight and literally kept Piedmont in the ball game. Tanner Poole with a nice tip in for Piedmont. Eighty-three sixty in a minute, counting down. But Coach Walker and Coach Mabel have these boys ready to play tomorrow. And on a loss like this, you go home. And if these boys were anything like, like it was when I played, you 
can't get to sleep till about two or three o'clock in the morning thinking about what you could have done or what you should have done. You learn from it and you get better. And Piedmont potentially has a good team. Has a team that can compete for the conference and come playoff time, Piedmont's gonna be a team to be reckoned with. And the ball game will end on that little runner from Taylor. It drops it to 23. And you gotta give it to Pensacola, they played well. They played well tonight, executed well, played good defense, and tonight was the better team. But like I said, these teams play 10 times. And I would dare say a split five and five. So we'll have the boys gather around the circle and there will be a prayer. And we'll sign off here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We'll see you tomorrow.